Smashamaniacs. Welcome back to the Geo Gearheads. This is episode 392. I'm Daryl W. Four. Chris of the Northwest has been uh, taken, I think, by the Independence Day uh, activities. And <laughs> he's uh, on his way, but he's not arrived yet. But we're going to be talking about uh, puzzles today and our 10th show on puzzles. And as our uh, foremost uh, puzzle uh, guest, we have Jennifer of Team AJK back. Hey there. Thanks for joining us on the 4th of July and you know, e- escaping from the uh, fireworks and the hot dogs and all of that kind of stuff for a little bit. Yep. Been there and done that all already. So good to go. Nice. All right. Well, uh, we're right, before we get started, we're, uh, we should mention that uh, you do the uh, geocaching puzzle of the day blog. And it's a great uh, little blog to check out. Uh, and we'll have the show notes and the uh, links. But do you want to give a little bit of a rundown on what that is for people who don't yet know? Sure. It's pretty much just exactly what it sounds like. Um, every single day, there is a puzzle cache from somewhere around the world that I have done and enjoyed and thought that other people might enjoy doing. Um, it's in its ninth year now, which is a little bit ridiculous i had no idea (laughs) that i'd go past even one year but it's still going um i feature all different difficulty levels and all different kinds of puzzles um most of them are not super duper hard ones you know because um i know people like a big variety and some people are just learning so it's just kind of a good place to go just to see what's out there and what other people are doing and i often do like themed puzzles i'll find like today i had a ben franklin theme and you know i'll find different holiday themes and whatnot and it's just a lot of fun and i think it's a nice way to give puzzle caches a little bit wider audience than maybe they might get um just on their own so i have fun hunting them down it's uh it does take work to you know see what's out there and find things that are fun to share and so if anybody has either solved or written any fun or clever or cute or unique puzzles that they feel like uh, others would enjoy i would really love it if you'd pass them along to me well and we would yeah boy i'm stumbling over my tongue i apologize (laughs) Uh, we wanted to have uh, another show on puzzle caches because it's been far too long. Uh, I think it was something like a year ago that we last had uh, um, Jim from the Waysiders on to talk about puzzle caches. And we used to do like four or so a year. Uh, you did, I think, at least three and a half of those. So Yeah, it, I've done quite a few of them. Time. Yeah, but it's always it's always fun to talk about puzzles. So yeah, I appreciate but you having me back. for some reason... It's been a while, and you were saying uh, pre-show that you're kind of seeing this waning interest that we're kind of seeing as well. And I wasn't sure if it was something that it's just our audience hasn't been asking as much about the puzzles or if it's in general. And it sounds like maybe it's it's the pendulum swinging away from puzzles for a little bit. Yeah, I think, I think it's really hard to say. You know, a lot of things, I guess, are cyclical. You know, we see that maybe just with caching in general. People that got into it a while back and were really into it um, aren't as into it maybe as they used to be. They moved on to other things. And uh, the, the maybe the whole, the you know, the caching community uh, as a whole is changing. So, I don't know. I think there, there still are enthusiastic puzzlers out there. And I've seen uh, one or two... Uh, folks that had to kind of quit putting things out for a while come back uh, and do some which has been really fun Uh, there's a a puzzler not exactly San Francisco Bay Area a little east of there named Lamneth who has some amazing puzzles and some of the most creative hides I have ever seen they're not exactly gadgety but they're almost gadgety um, but they're all with puzzles and uh, he started putting out a bunch more lately, which has been really, really fun. And I'm hoping to get to make some finds on some of those soon. Um, but, you know, some of the other folks that uh, I could count on 
checking every so often to see what they had out that might be new and fun. Just haven't put anything out in a, in a while. And I myself have slowed down a lot in terms of putting things out. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I think there's an awful lot of geo art out there. So certainly the numbers of puzzle caches, I, I wouldn't say have gone down, but the ones that are actually, you know, real puzzles as opposed to just kind of a quickie, um, thing to get your geo art um you know maybe maybe there are a few of them maybe not i don't, I don't know I, I don't have statistics to back me up it's just kind of a feeling that, yes, that i get anecdotal evidence but yes yeah, exactly it, it seems like you're right a lot of them have gone to the uh, uh geo art you know a lot of the effort goes into creating the actual artwork not so much into the uh, puzzles themselves and if you're creating something like that you want it to be a nice easy to solve puzzles so that everyone can get it. There are but, some exceptions to that. I have to say, I did find a series in Australia uh, that I really enjoyed because they were they were all different and they were puzzles and all different difficulty levels and uh, you know. But those are those are fewer and far between. You know, most of them are like you say the the quick ones. And I get that if people sure, want to yeah. go and do a hundred caches, you know. They may not want to do a hundred puzzles. Yeah, that's an awful lot of puzzles to solve. Yeah. And a lot of answers to. Or right. Yeah. But the it other is. thing we've been seeing is people putting more effort to get into the containers, so that's mm -hmm. less time to uh, craft a clever puzzle for exactly. the cash page if you have to do it for the container itself. Yep. And the so. and the fun the fun containers and the you know good places are a huge part of it. I always appreciate that as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like uh, Chris has arrived from his uh, uh, barbecue. Now, the question is, can I actually hear him? <laughs> well, you know, here's a puzzle for you. It's, when was I going to show up? <laughs> that that was a puzzle, and I can actually hear you tonight, which is a Ooh, good thing. I was worried about that one, actually. That yeah, so, nice. so was I. Yeah. Well, good. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Glad you're here, too. But, uh, it's kind of a <laughs> different day. You know, I just realized, I don't know. 20 minutes ago, I was like, you know, I haven't had my phone with me all day. Ah. I had no idea what time it was. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that, that would be a problem. So there we go. See, how did you go caching if you didn't have your phone? I didn't go caching today. Come on. It's a national holiday. You have to go caching. Uh, no, no, I don't. Um, we had a spectacular air show just a couple of blocks away from me is the waterfront. And, um, you know, we get to see the planes. And so we were out there and an F-18 flew by full afterburners and low, you know, rattled all the houses, set off the car alarms. It, uh, it was good. I'm proud to be an American. Yeah, and, and when you said error show, I was thinking you meant E-R-R-O-R. A-R, <laughs> A-I-R. See, that's A -R. not as much uh, entertainment. As error show comes on the computer, computer almost every week. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's what, I, I that, that's what like fail blog is for. <laughs> oh, there weren't any on the America's air funniest show. home videos. You remember when those weren't digital? You had to uh -huh. uh, send in your tape. Yeah, I, I was just watching uh, an old episode on YouTube the other day going, oh my goodness. Uh, nostalgia, right? Anyway. So getting back to the topic at hand, which was puzzles, we, we started talking about this show um, going, you know, we know we want to do something on puzzles, but what's new and interesting to talk about? And it immediately came up, well, mystery at the museum's coming up and we don't have a clue what it is. So uh, we don't even know where to start. Get a clue. <laughs> yeah, I think anything that we can uh, come up with in terms of predicting you know how any kind of puzzly component of that last bit is going to go uh is pure speculation but why not we can do yeah. that well and it gives us a chance to talk just generally about how to find out what the puzzle is and how to solve it so all we know right now is that to get some basic clues you have to get the uh caches and then somehow you're given a clue from that cache and I'm not sure if you actually get the clue if, or if it's just, it counts as a point. But once you find so many caches that have the clues, you'll get the souvenirs. And we know that in the souvenirs, there's something hidden. 
And the one thing I noticed in this that I thought was interesting and will require a little bit more planning maybe than um, some of the other, you know, kind of promotional things that they have run is that you have to actually find the clues in order. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, you know, when you're planning your, at least your logging, if not your actual route and finding, you need to log the, you know, the detective one first, which is number one, before you can log caches that had the other different clues in them. So having, it'll take a little bit of planning to, to locate the caches that have those correct souvenirs you know, not souvenirs, connect clues in them and then make sure that you log them in the appropriate order to get everything to line up the way it's supposed to. So, Yeah, this is going to be one of the more challenging to execute uh, promos that they've done for sure. And I know if I weren't traveling, I would, well, there's probably enough traditionals around here that I haven't done, but I know quite a few people around here that have pretty much cashed out the area. And so it could be difficult to find enough, you know, enough new different caches that had all these different clues in them, because it sounded like to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that any new caches that come out will all have that same detective clue in them. Uh, the events will all have the detective clue, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but new caches will all be issued a clue but I didn't see that it was I thought be it said detective. that all the new ones were going to get the detective, but I could yeah, be see, wrong. The only th reference that I found to that was for events. So all events get the detective clue. Okay. But we'll yeah, have to the, do our homework on that. The new, uh, new caches are all going to get clues regardless, but the old caches uh, are going to be like randomly assigned what their uh, clues are. Right. But you can't collect the clue if you've already found the cache. Right. Which makes sense, but at the same time, it's obnoxious for those of us who have cashed out an area. Right. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how it works. You know, when I was thinking about how they might do this, I mean, it sounds like the the last goal is to come up with a combination for the safe or whatever, where we're supposed to put these things back um, after we have found them is that the way you're interpreting it mm -hmm. okay yeah, so, combination to the vault because the yes the crooks the thieves have changed the combination so you've got to be able to get the open the vault to put the jewels back yes so uh i'm looking here on uh the mystery at the museum faq it does actually say that new geocaches published between July 11th and August 11th will all receive the detective clue. Oh, okay. So there you go. So that means if you've cached out your area, you can't rely on, on new caches to help you. You're going to have to go somewhere else to find old ones is how I would interpret that. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, um, And it is starting like this time next week too. So, you know, we got to get our uh, ducks in order and figure out what's going on. We, we actually... have lost Lori. Jennifer? Jennifer. Sorry. Jennifer. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It looks like we did. Uh, that's unfortunate. But yeah. It's, it's, so we don't have a whole lot of uh, information about uh how this is working they've given us a good fact but i think we're getting more information in the not so distant future right yeah i think you know they, they tell you you know you have to get the detective clue and then find so many caches to get the next one and so on um i don't think you have to find caches of a certain type to do it i think any cache find that has a clue in it will be acceptable i believe so and i'm i'm looking at this uh, Night at the Museum's clues screen that they have a screenshot for. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you have to collect multiples of some of the types. So right. I'm not sure how this is going to really work. But you have to admit the um, the effort they've put into this is really good. Uh, you know, they got good, they always have good artwork. But 
some of the videos, you know, and other things are really good. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm very uh, uh, interested in how this is going to work. And it's the first time that you have the um, new, you know, clue kind of thing that they've set up for it. And mm -hmm. at this point, it's only available on the website or through the, uh, the geocache. Yeah, the geocache issued apps for iOS and Android. So you have to use one of those to figure out what the clues are. I don't believe that's going to be a requirement for logging just to find the clues. You know, to figure out which ones have the clues and which clues in which one. Yeah, it looks like there are nine clues we have to find. The detective, footprint, shadow, fingerprints, sapphire, ruby, diamond, emerald, and topaz, according to the screenshot on the... But some of those you have to get two clues to actually mark it off. Mm -hmm. um, GSM Times 2 says, uh, we have to be patient. Darn. Yeah, I know. It, it got all this going. It's like, ah. Oh. See, and uh, this, this is a problem is that we want the information to plan because geocachers tend to be the kind of people who will plan for stuff. You know, and we've been right now uh, over here trying to get the uh, State Park Geo Tour that we talked about uh, with Merlin 1392. So we're up to 10. We've got 10 caches from that series. Nice. But part of the reason to do that rather than some of the more local caches is we want to try to save the local caches for a night at the uh, museum or no, mystery at the museum. I got gotcha. Very so, unfortunate. One interesting thing, you know, it says, uh, do I have to log my finds in a specific order to collect the clues? Clues are only awarded to your account. If you have been, if you have successfully unlocked the appropriate level, be sure to make sure that seems odd. The level has been unlocked before you log caches associated with more advanced levels. Am I in there? Yes. Hello. Yes, you are back. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. We were just talking about some of the uh, information we do have from the uh, uh, fact page. You, you, you got distracted and went over to uh, Netflix, didn't you? No, I'm my son came in and unplugged the router, so <laughs> I had my internet was gone. Oh no! <sighs> okay, now I'm back. <laughs> Hello. Oh, <sighs> well, okay. so Chris, from what it sounds like with that, it might be because I understand that we're going to have like the five or the four souvenirs, really, and then the fifth one is for completion. Exactly. So I'm thinking it's uh, the four levels, so you might be able to actually find clues for different you know of different types as you hit that level so maybe you could find you know the topaz and the uh sapphire clue at the same time it doesn't matter for order for those because they're both in level four or whatever could be um well you're i think you're right briefed on the case i think is going to open up the whole thing for you that's the first souvenir and that's going to be your detective clue uh, right. evident, evidence collected, and we're piecing this together as we're going here. Uh, evidence collected, I got to go back up to the list, would be like fingerprint or footprint, shadow, fingerprint, right? So um, it says to get that uh, evidence collected, you need to find six clues and six geocaches. And then the third souvenir, jewels recovered, is going to uh be with sapphire ruby diamond emerald topaz which oddly enough is five and then you need 15 of those clues to unlock the jewels recovered so i think it's going to be one geocache for detective two each for pr footprint shadow and fingerprint three each for the jewels interesting that's that's what i came up with off the top of my head looking at breaking this down in a logical manner and I'm sure we'll get a lot more and talk about it in the future as well. But Because why would I be logical? Yeah. Exactly. Well, you didn't have to agree with that, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> We're podcasters. We, we don't go geocaching and we don't do actual logic. Oh, yeah. So, you know, two plus two equals five for large values of two. 
Absolutely. Uh, Udak uh, wants to know why the diamond isn't last. That's supposed to be the strongest gem. Yeah, you know, it, it may be. I don't, I don't know which order these will be released in, but according to the screenshot on the um, Mystery FAQ. at the Museum FAQ, uh, it goes Sapphire, Ruby, Diamond, Emerald, Topaz. So that may not be the, the order the clues are released in. I have to think of the right word. So we'll find out. Yeah, so we don't have a whole lot of good information about what's really going to happen, but we have a lot of information to start the speculation and to you know, start some basic prep, like knowing we don't want to find caches until this starts on the 11th. <laughs> well, I made a mistake then. Last weekend, I went out and did the Tri-Cities Geocoin Challenge and found 40-some-odd caches, so sorry. Yes, but, but you're not getting my back head. out there. Right. So yeah, that's fine. You you just have to save the caches that you can easily get during the almost a month that this is going to be running. And Daryl, I should have brought down the, you can't call it a geo coin. It's more of a geo sculpture for this one. It's fantastic. I definitely want to see that one. Yeah. Yeah. They always do a great job with those. So it, uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And this is their 10th anniversary, so they've they've gone above and beyond. But Excellent. you know what? We're not talking about that because this year there weren't any puzzle caches on it. In the past, there has been. And uh, Jennifer, as you've said, they are very easy puzzle caches. Uh, you know, the idea is to find them, not to be truly puzzled by them. Right. right? So. Um, Just to keep the posted coordinates in a nice picture. Yeah, there you go. And some of it is, you know, simple math and that. But yeah, there are there are some puzzles that I still look at and go, I have no clue where to start. You know, I hope that the title or the hint or somewhere in the description tells me what I'm looking for, but I don't see it. Right. I mean, there's plenty of puzzles that I look at and I have no idea where to start. Oh, either. thank you for saying that. I mean, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And, and it's so funny because I, I guess just like anything else, I think you can get kind of streaky where you're seeing everything and then you can have one of these slumps that last forever mm -hmm. and you don't know your name. Um, and I, it had been a long time since I had one of those really nice little streaky periods. And I just had one over the weekend where I was, I was looking at stuff I had looked at many times over many years without seeing anything. And then finally I was just in the right, you know, frame of mind. Exactly. The frame of mind or the stars were aligned or something and boom, I could see it. So you just, I think not giving up is, is a big part of it. And, uh, you know, hopefully with practice, you do get a better idea of some of the places where people will drop those little breadcrumbs. That's, that's what I tend to call them. Those little, those little hints that once you see them, it's, it's so obvious, you know, mm -hmm. that's the kind of puzzles I like to write where at first glance you may not know what the world i'm talking about or it actually looks like i'm talking about something else but then you realize there's words that could be construed differently and if you just kind of look at it from a little different angle mm -hmm. you'll see something And I, I always go back to this where i feel like looking at a puzzle and the, the whole process of puzzle solving it's just like geocaching you know when you first start geocaching you don't know what a geo pile is and you've never seen a nano and you know you just don't have that that geo sense. Mm -hmm. um, you can do the same thing with, with puzzles. You can figure out what kind of the tricks are and what things to look for. And then when you do find something that that's new and different that you haven't ever seen before, it's all that much cooler. So, um, but thinking about images, you know, and what kinds of things they could, they could put into images. Um, I, I'm assuming we're going to be looking for numbers for this, uh, vault. vault, yeah, um, and I don't know if they'll give us. It's it's so hard to say if it's a three number thing or a four number thing, and maybe we'll be able to get one from each picture. Or um, there's lots and lots of different ways you could visually have a number in there. 
um, things with, you know, like a clock face semaphore type thing where the hands on the clock are pointing in a certain direction. I've seen that used quite a bit. Um, things like Braille or yeah. Morse code or, you know, any kind of binary representation. Um, there's, there's many, many different things we could look for there. Um, I've thought about this other idea where if each actual clue was going to give us something, um, I had more fun with that idea thinking about maybe they were going to construct like this logic puzzle where you had to have all the pieces, all, you know, however many pieces it is um, to figure it out. That That's probably more complicated than what they're going to do, but it was fun to think about. <laughs> that's how I'd do it. If I were going to do it, I'd make this, you know, a solvable, but intricate logic puzzle and talk about, you know, the people on the, thieves crew and what so-and-so's favorite number was and the number on the, the first number was by one of the women on the crew or you know and the third number was by so-and-so I don't know I could, I could have a lot of fun trying to put together something like that um, the other possibility I had thought of is it, it's sort of a logic puzzle but it's kind of a crazy thing that I've seen it in actually the first place I saw it was in a geocache puzzle but it actually comes from the MIT puzzle hunt thing. Hmm. It's called a duck conundrum. Have you guys ever heard of this kind of puzzle? No, but I'm often flummoxed by ducks. <laughs> the duck conundrum is, is kind of a set of instructions where you're given, you know, people sitting in a circle or, you know, chairs with numbers on them or something like that. And you're, you're told to rearrange things in a, certain way and the, the instructions just get more and more complicated and the original one they they told you it was it was supposed to be kind of an action puzzle and you were actually supposed to have the chairs and have you know paint and have you know, hmm. people to actually sit in them and and the instructions got so complicated at one point they told you you needed to have a duck and so <laughs> that's why they they call it a duck conundrum um but they're they're crazy just for how complicated they can be and often you'll get down there to about step 11 and they'll say okay now disregard everything after step four and so then you have to kind of rewind and so get rid of can, the truck yeah exactly okay. <laughs> they can certainly come up there? with a really really complicated uh thing to do there but I, I don't think they're gonna do that either but that's that was one of the other things that kind of came into my mind as as to how you could create something with a whole bunch of different pieces of information where you really did need to have all of them. Um, you know, if it's only four different pieces of information, you kind of figure once you got three of them, you could kind of brute force the, mm -hmm. the fourth one. Um, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out since, since we haven't seen it yet. <laughs> exactly. It, it is total speculation um i'm trying to think of other ways to, to visually get numbers uh billiard balls is another one mm. i've seen the different colors from the billiard mm -hmm. balls mm -hmm. those have numbers on them resistor codes oh exactly yeah With that's colors. a good one yep. yep another one for color yep um it'll it's gonna be fun to see i'm glad there's at least some kind of a a puzzle ish element to this mm -hmm. i think i've enjoyed these little summer summer challenges um and i think in the past a couple of them have had an option that that you could um you know for us puzzlers the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to find some puzzles. I'm, I'm just as glad that they, they're not stressing the the high difficulty ones though i remember there was one year they were sort of encouraging people to find a five star or something and I was worried that people were going to start trying to write five star puzzles that weren't going to be good puzzles. You right. know, I mean, anybody can make a puzzle that nobody can solve, but that's not fun. <laughs> 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 the challenge is to make it hard and challenging, but still doable. So, right. Yeah. Wet Coaster says that uh, this summer promo, 
doesn't have enough souvenirs because he needs eight more to fulfill a challenge. Ah. So yeah, I think that's something that he has to uh, write to Rock Chalk about, and it has to be Rock Chalk personally and make that complaint. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, that one year, wasn't it 31 <laughs> days of, of August? You got one yeah. for every right, day? You also had another one in there, so it was like a total of uh, 32 plus... Yeah. Uh, one for like international uh, geocaching oh, yep. day or something. Yep. So yep. I think if you did the whole thing and it got all of them, because there were a couple of megas or something in there, you could get like 35 uh, souvenirs in one month. Wow. That was overkill. Yeah. I didn't get anywhere near all of them, but I got a few of them. So, and it was kind of fun to know that no matter what day you went out, you'd get something. So that was fun. Well, and I think the last uh, promo where there was actually like a puzzle element in the souvenirs was the Mary Hyde event. That's the, the one that's coming to mind to me right now. Uh, I remember something in either it was Pi Day or beginning and end okay. of the year. Yeah, the Pi Day one was uh, very simple, though. Or not simple, yeah. but it was very uh, um, not related. It just gave you an Easter egg. Yeah. Okay. But the Mary Hyde one, actually, you had to solve it to get the code, or, you know, to get the uh, tracking code or whatever it was that you earned, if I remember correctly. I might well, not. Yeah, and a few years ago, there was one that they wanted you to do a bunch of different types of caches. Like, yeah. I can remember going to an event when I was in Minnesota traveling um, just, just to get that social uh, souvenir or whatever it was. And... That was kind of fun to Yeah, I think expand. that was last year's with the you might be a geocacher or what type of geocacher mm -hmm. are you? That's what it was. You might you be a geocacher if. Yeah, no, it was the what type of geocacher, I believe. Okay. And there was the four different ones. Hang on. Now I got to look that up. <laughs> well, are you saying like the seeker, the, I can't come up with all of them now. Yeah, I was thinking about the, uh. Which ones was I thinking about? I'm looking to see if I can see it. Well, the 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 fun with favorites that was that was mm -hmm. one of the ones I was thinking of. That was 2015. Uh, that had a. Okay, so the last one we did was Cash Carnival, and that was based on favorites. Yeah, that that was uh, not the summer promo though, but the one that uh, we were talking about is the uh, what type of casher are you? And it had the cash connoisseur adrenaline junkie social butterfly and the trackable lover so those were the four types of cachers that they right that featured. we were talking about yeah you might be a geocacher if yeah you might uh -huh. be a caching connoisseur if you might be a social butterfly if. Yep. yeah yeah so that was one i think where you had to do like the five well i don't know it was five but it was like four or five terrain caches for the uh point yeah that one and then you had to move trackables for one of them. And yeah. So, it, and then the favorite points, I think, was the connoisseur. Uh -huh. uh, and then the event for the social butterfly. Mm -hmm. So, I, I thought that was a, a cool way to get people out of their com comfort zone and doing some of the caches that they might not have done otherwise. Uh -huh. Yeah. It looks like I'm just looking back through my, it looks like 2014, 15, and 16 all had some uh, piece that you could do related to a puzzle specifically. So those were fun. I was thinking back to 14 was the seven souvenirs of August. Uh -huh. Yep. The socializer. Uh, uh, Collector, achiever, yeah. Puzzler. That's, that's what I think you were. That's what I was thinking you were going for, Daryl. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so two years ago, not last year. Yeah. Yeah, and it was the Pi Day event in 15 that had the um, secret GC code on the two uh -huh. um, souvenirs Yep, that got you to a, a cash page. Okay, so Udax says that uh, you could earn another uh, souvenir for the fall CEDO season. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then John says that uh, August 17th is International Geocaching Day, which should be getting us another souvenir. And Plus, simple, hit new states and provinces. Yep. 
Yeah. 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 Easy. Also, for countries. Yeah. yeah. Get the right one. Going on. Mm-hmm. So I know. Actually, I don't know if both are during, but I know that uh, Midwest Geo Bash is coming up, and so is uh, West Bend. Uh, but I don't know if West Bend is in the window. That might be just outside. Mm. Well, Ape, the Ape event will give you a souvenir as well. Sure. Yeah. So plenty of uh, mega events, and West yeah, Coast just needs to uh, make it to some of those. Mm-hmm. Nice. They didn't do a big blue switch day this year, did they? Souvenir. Not that I saw. It doesn't mean that they didn't do it, but I didn't see it. That was uh, five two. Would be. I don't know why they call it the big blue switch. There was not a switch, and it's not blue. No. <laughs> it's a good image. Oh, okay. Exactly. Okay, Gary says, uh, Wickhoster says that uh, he's going to get two more countries and at least one state plus a mega in August. So he's going to be fine. He just actually has to, you know, get at least a couple of those uh, uh, Mystery at the Museum ones. There you go. So, Wickhoster, how many uh, souvenirs do you need for this challenge? Well, he needs eight more. Well, eight more, but how many total? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I have way too many souvenirs because of that uh, August one. You know, August is my birthday month, and I did get my birthday, but I didn't get them all that month. No? No. I've yeah, got we started uh, our one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I didn't even get my birthday, and I got uh, 23, 24, 25. That was it. 150 souvenirs. Um well, Cashly doesn't give you your souvenir count. No. Uh, G- the official app does. I just went over 151 with the mega event. All right. Now I got to find it. Souvenirs. You can't even get that off the web page. I was going to say, I'm going to have to just count on the web page. I don't think I've got 150. Yeah. 178 is mine. Thanks. So, yeah, on the official app, the geocaching or apps, you hit the uh, profile and go to souvenirs and it's at the top of the list. Silence as everybody opens their apps. Check and post them in the uh, chat. And White Coaster says that he needs 150 souvenirs for that challenge. Yeah, you know, you could do a couple of geo tours. They'll give you a souvenir. If you finish the whole thing. If you do the whole thing, right. I've got 99. I'm surprised I even had that many. That's cool. Just one more and you're in trouble. I know. I'll get my 100th. That's something to aim for. 99 souvenirs, but, you know, this year's ain't one. 99 happy souvenirs. Oh. (laughs) Is is that what you sing when you go caching? 99 souvenirs on my page. 99 souvenirs. (laughs) No. (laughs) Okay. I've seen some puzzles built around the souvenirs. Yeah. Those are kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. The challenges based on souvenirs, I think are interesting. Um, I, you know, I don't know if, well, I was going to say, I don't know if you could do them now because I don't think those are trackable, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, GSM times two says the big blue switch is a better image than programmer removing code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't even know where the big blue switch came from, but it's been a thing almost as long as I can remember yeah. in geocaching. And I, I, it actually didn't start as the big blue switch, though. It did start as, uh, or the first few times I heard it, it was just you know, flipping the switch to turn off selective availability. Right. And then it turned into the big blue switch. And I think it was the blue before it was the big blue. It was just the blue switch? Yeah. Because I seem to remember uh, someone saying that they turned off the blue switch. (laughs) But I don't remember exactly because it's, you know, one of those things you really don't care about too much. Right. You're just happy that someone turned off that switch. Uh-huh. 
doesn't matter who, and it doesn't matter <laughs> what the color of the switch or anything was. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes, it does matter. No. So, no. no, it doesn't because it's off. Well, and the problem is if it were actually a switch like that, someone could put it back in and they turn, could turn it, it on. back on. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want it to be a switch like that. You'd act suggest it's a uh, blue for, because it's a patriotic color. Could be. I'm thinking sky blue, but okay. Well, you wouldn't want the red switch because that might be the self-destruct. No, oh. that, that, that sounds bad. Yeah. And I always switch wonder switch why they have color. those red switches. Really? Why did I put a self-destruct button? Yeah. On? Well, it's obvious why you put the self-destruct button on so that no one else can get that merchandise, that item, whatever it is. But more importantly, what kind of plot point do you have if you don't have that self-destruct? <laughs> it's very, very true. I always wanted to know how they could remember all those those codes that they needed to turn it off once it was on, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, you oh, can't remember your password to get into exactly. your book, but you, you, you <laughs> can remember how to shut off the uh, codes that you've never used. White Coaster says the reason it's blue is because people were turning blue, holding their breath, waiting for the uh, differential signal to be removed. Yeah, that may be a stretch, but okay. I think so. Maybe it's blue from all the people that drove into the lakes. Oh. When they shouldn't have. Uh. Okay. Guidance. Why is this road going? Ah, splish. <laughs> So now we need bad maps to uh, compensate for that. Wait, no, we don't. Why don't we need the bad maps? Uh, I don't know that, but <laughs> we don't need bad maps. Just, just stop thinking that. Well, if we don't have the bad maps, how are we going to send the people who don't pay attention to where they're actually driving into the lake? Remember, you should have bought a squirrel. Squirrel. Sorry, <laughs> right, we're we're just getting way too silly. Man. I'm we're, sorry, we're way. Yeah, uh, it's Fourth of you July. You know what? It's a holiday. It's, it's Fourth you know. of July. We've all had you know too much to eat or too many caches or whatever. Uh, yeah. Is I it think dark it's, here yet, Daryl? Yes, it is. And the fireworks have been going off for the last hour and a half. I think. Yeah, that's probably about right. We we haven't. I haven't actually heard anything yet. So. Uh, well, we we expect our fireworks to start about 10 for the, you know, the municipal the official ones. Yeah. Right. All right. So why don't we wrap this up? Thank you so much again, uh, Jennifer, for joining us. And don't forget everyone to check out that uh, geocaching uh, puzzle of the day log. Wow. I'm having problems with that. Sorry. Why don't, why don't Jennifer, why don't you just give us a little plug for that one again? It's just geocaching puzzle of the day uh, at blogspot. <laughs> And it's pretty easy to find. You Google, it'll come up. And I definitely would love to hear from anybody who's got some puzzles they think should be featured on there. Nice. Yep. Thank you for doing that. That's some great information there. There are there are some a few little uh, tips and things embedded in there, and you can always search back and look at the old posts. You know, they don't they don't go anywhere, and they're really all over the world. Um, yeah. So some good stuff. Well, Jennifer, thank you for joining us tonight. Tell your son he can reset the router now anytime. Oh, he my wants. goodness. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some things you can't control. Children are one of them. There you go. I have two myself. <laughs> um, folks, next week, we're going to do one of my favorite shows. That's no puzzle because you already know what it is. It's a randomized show. But our guest is going to be C. Michelle or C. Michelle. C. My shell you can say it multiple different ways but you know the guy he's from down under so our show will be upside down next week check the cash website at cash for more on the geo gear has including show notes for this and all of our episodes we love hearing from our listeners so leave us feedback by emailing geo at cash or through social media your support helps keep the cash shows coming please consider becoming a patron through link on our website to support the cash shows Geo Gearheads is produced by Chris Hoffenauer and Daryl Wanberg. This show is copyright 2019 by Daryl Wanberg. All rights reserved. Guess where the cash
Social Media.